So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this super cute pug illustration in Procreate. Along the way, you'll learn a handful of my favorite illustration tricks that I use in almost every project. As usual, you can paint this using any brushes you want, but I'll list the ones I'm using in the description. So I've already got the sketch placed in here, and you can download this one for free in the description. I've just placed it in here as the very top layer, and then I set it to multiply. And kind of by default, it's pretty dark, so I lowered the opacity to lighten it. And of course, to start painting, I'm going to select a blank layer down here below the sketch and below the paper texture. And I'm going to start by painting the pug. So for that, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush. And I'm going to use this to fill out a pretty rough background wash that totally covers the pug. I'm not worried about going beyond the sketch because we'll cut it back later on. And this looks good, but I think it's too dark. So I'm going to go to my adjustments, hue saturation and brightness, and I'm going to brighten it a little bit. Next, I'm going to paint on the darker areas of the pug. And that's going to be on a blank layer above my wash. I'm going to choose a darker version of my pug color, but I'm going to make it a lot less saturated. For the brush, I'm going to switch to the fine liner pen. And I'm just going to use this to roughly fill in those areas that are supposed to be a little bit darker. And this looks pretty good, but you'll notice I didn't fill in the tail. Uh, and that's because there's a little bit of a trick to that I'll show you in a minute. For now, I want to blur all these using the Gaussian Blur. So for that, I'll go to my Adjustments, Gaussian Blur. And if I slide on the screen, I can set this to around 10%. Next, I'm going to zoom in on the tail and do this one a little bit more carefully. So again, I'm going to use the fine liner pen, the same kind of desaturated brown, and I'm just going to fill out the tail like this. Now these edges here, I want them to stay sharp, but I want this to kind of fade into the body. So for that, I'm going to change my brush to the water blender, and I'm just going to use it at a really small size to kind of smooth out and work this uh, transition. And once all the darker areas are painted in like this, I'm going to merge them together with the background wash we made in the first place. Then I'm going to grab the eraser brush, which is set to the fine liner pen. And I'm going to use that to cut everything we've painted so far back until it matches the sketch. Next, I think I'll move on and fill in the boots. And those are going to be on their own separate layer. I'm just going to use the abstract round again, and then kind of roughly fill them in with this yellow tone. And then just like we did with the body of the pug, I'm going to go back with the eraser and cut everything back so it matches the sketch. And when I follow this technique of loosely filling things in and then using the eraser to clean it up, I think it has a really interesting paper cut look. And once all the major elements and colorations of the pug are filled in, I'd like to move on and do the shading next. And for this illustration, it's super easy. I just need to add a shadow along the neck and then also on this back leg. So for that, I'm gonna make sure the layer with the pug is selected. Then I'll grab the selection tool set to freehand and I'll just make a selection along the neck like this. Then I'll circle back, hue saturation and brightness, and I'll just darken that area a little bit. There we go. Now for the back leg, I'll grab the selection tool again and I'll do basically the same thing there we go, and I'll darken it as well. Now I think this shadow is okay if I leave it kind of sharp, but this one I like to soften. So for that, I'm gonna switch back to the water blender, and I'm just gonna use this to smooth out that transition. Now the point of shadows, of course, is to bring out some depth, but it's hard to see if we were successful as long as the sketch is turned on. So just temporarily, I'll switch it off, and you can see I do have a nice uh, amount of separation there, but I think I want to increase it just a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to grab a scratchy brush in the drawing tab here called the Little Pine. And I'm just going to grab a color from the body of the pug, maybe a slightly lighter version of it. And I'll just follow along the edge of the shadow and kind of outline it. And with the shadows and outlines finished, I'm going to move on and add the face details. And these are really simple. I'm going to turn the sketch back on and these details are gonna be on their own blank layer above everything, and I want them to have a sort of scratchy texture. So I'm gonna do them all using the Little Pine and the Gloaming Brush, and these are both in the Drawing tab. So for the eyes uh, and the pupils and the cheeks, I'm gonna use the Gloaming Brush for those. 
and then for pretty much everything else, I'm just using the little pine. And I think those details look pretty good. I do want to mention something about the mouth. So this pug is generally a very cute illustration. And a trick I often use is to give uh, cute animals somewhat negative or kind of weird expressions. So I went out of my way to exaggerate the mouth like this just because it contrasts really nicely with the cuteness of the illustration. Another thing I often do is spend a lot of time refining the eyes. And so uh, what I do is I'll turn off the sketch and I'll just look at the eyes and they look a little bit um, out of balance. I want them to be because this is a pug, but I feel like this one is a little bit too small compared to that one. So to fix this and to kind of refine it, I'm going to go to my adjustments. I'll go to liquify and set it to push. You can copy my settings here and generally I'm going to use this at a pretty small size and I'm just going to go in there and spend a little bit of time refining and balancing the eyes and then also making sure they're looking in the right direction. In this case, since it's a pug, I'm going to make the eyes slightly opposed. And once the pug is totally finished, I recommend merging all the layers we used for him together onto one. Turn the sketch back on, make a new layer above the pug, and this is where we can move on and paint the umbrella. And the overall process for the umbrella is pretty much the same as the pug, but there is a little bit of a trick I used to save time. So first, I'm going to switch back to the watercolor kit and grab the abstract round. I'll choose a nice bright yellow tone, and I'm going to roughly fill out the uh, umbrella here with a pretty consistent wash. And I'm just filling in this top segment here, kind of ignoring the bottom part. After that, I'm going to grab the eraser brush, which is still set to the fine liner pen. And I want to increase the smoothness of my brush strokes. So I'll go to my settings here. I'll go to preferences, pressure and smoothing. And I'm going to raise the stabilization up super high. And this is going to let me kind of erase in a very smooth, syrupy way. And this is what I'm going to use to erase everything into an umbrella shape. Next, I'm going to create a duplicate of it. Then I'm going to select the bottom one. I'll grab the arrow tool set to warp. And I'm going to pull it down and try to fill in the bottom section. There we go. Now you can see in some areas it's not overlapping the top uh, quite correctly. So I'm going to do my best to fix that as well. And you can definitely avoid this trick and just paint it in manually. But I just do it that way to save a little bit of time. Now at this point, I'm just going to mess with the opacity of each kind of section of the umbrella. So I have a nice layering that gives this uh, a sense of depth. And once the two pieces for the top of the umbrella are finished, I'm going to move on and paint the handle. And that's going to be on a blank layer above everything. I'm going to change my color to a gray tone like this. For the brush, I'm going to switch to the fine liner pen. And I still have that kind of stabilization uh, turned on, so all my strokes are pretty smooth. And I'm going to use this to fill in the handle. And once the handle is finished, I'm going to finish up the umbrella by adding the details on the top. And those are going to be on their own layer as well. And for the brush, I'm going to do all the details using the uh, little pine brush again. For the spars, I'm just using a slightly darker shade of this yellow tone. And then for the top of the umbrella, I'm going to use the same gray I used for the handle. And once the umbrella is finished, I'm going to merge all the layers for it together onto one. And then I can move on and paint the rain. And that's going to be on a blank layer above the umbrella. For the brush, I'm going to continue using the little pine brush. I just need to make sure I turn off that stabilization effect. And I think I'll do the rain in this kind of light blue tone. And first, I'll just draw one kind of long raindrop like this. Then I can use the arrow tool set to freeform. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Then I'll duplicate that raindrop. Shrink it a little bit and then kind of arrange it off to the side. And I'll do this two more times so I have four raindrops. There we go. I think this is a pretty good spread. Next, I'm going to merge all the raindrops together onto one layer. Then I'll duplicate that, move it off to the side. I'll use the uh, flip tool here to reflect it. And I'll, I'll kind of position it a little bit staggered like this. There we go. I'll merge those together. 
and I'll just make a few more copies until I can kind of fill the space across the umbrella. And in this case, it only took four copies of the rain to fill that space. So I'm gonna merge all the copies here onto one layer. And finally, since we have all the major elements of the scene finished, we can start putting together the final illustration. And the first thing I'm gonna do for that is just switch off the sketch. We don't need it anymore. I want the rain to have a sort of overprinting effect on the umbrella. So I'm gonna change the transparency mode of that layer to multiply. Now the umbrella is overlapping on the dog, but I want it to go behind the head. So I'm gonna select the umbrella layer. I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and I'm just gonna erase the umbrella handle where it shouldn't be visible. There we go. And then the last thing I recommend doing is giving this illustration a skew. Now this is a very subtle kind of stylistic thing and you don't have to do it, but I think it looks really good on simple illustrations like this and it's super easy. First, I'm gonna select the umbrella and the pug, both of those layers uh, kind of at the same time. Then I'll go to my arrow tool, set it to distort. And I'm kind of imagining the wind is blowing the rain this way. So I want these guys to lean into the rain just a little bit. There we go. After that, I'm gonna do the same thing to just the rain layer, but I'm gonna skew it a little bit more significantly. There we go. Then I'll position the rain until it looks good. And then I can go in there with the eraser brush and I can erase kind of any of the raindrops that don't quite fit into this arrangement. And just like that, this illustration is finished. Before I go, I wanted to mention that all the concepts I cover in these tutorials are totally free and open, and you're welcome to sell anything you paint, even if your artwork looks very similar to mine. This pug design in particular, I think might look really good as a saleable greeting card, especially if you added a personalized message on the top or the bottom. If you like today's project, here are two more watercolor animal tutorials I think you'll love to watch next.